Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving a radical equation. We have square root of x plus 8 plus the square root of x equals 4 and we're going to be solving for x values. We're looking for real and complex all solutions pretty much and I'll be presenting two methods. If there's another one like a third method please let me know in the comment section down below. Let's get started with the first one. So for my first method, I would like to clear the radicals. There is a couple different ways to do it. So we can call this 1a and 1b, sort of. One method is just squaring both sides. Let's go ahead and do it. So this is equal to 4. And we can just go ahead and square both sides. Obviously, squaring introduces some uh, extraneous solutions. We have to uh, check them at the end. When you square a plus b, you get a squared, which is square root of x plus 8 squared. And remember, that is just x plus 8. Plus b squared, by the way, I'm calling this a and this one b. That's going to give us x plus 2ab. Remember the formula? a squared plus b squared plus 2ab. And the 2ab is just going to be 2 times the square root of x plus 8 times the square root of x. And on the right hand side, we have 16. Great. Let's go ahead and simplify this further. I can go ahead and combine like terms. x plus x is equal to 2x. 2x plus 8 plus 2 times. Now these two radicals, they have the same kind of radical. They're both square roots, so we can multiply what's inside. And that's going to give us x squared plus 8x. If you distribute the x over x plus 8, you get this. And then this is equal to 16. Now, our goal is always clear, it's always to clear all uh, radicals, so we should isolate it first. Now, what happens if I square both sides? I'm going to clear some of the radicals, but more radicals will be introduced by the product 2ab. Make sense? That's why it's a good idea to just isolate this radical first. So I'm going to subtract, I'm going to subtract 2x plus 8 from both sides. 16 minus 8 is 8. And then that's going to be a minus 2x. Now at this point, I realize I can divide both sides by 2. You don't have to do it, but it will simplify my work. So divide by 2, and you get this. At this point, you need to square both sides one more time. Again, squaring sometimes introduces extra solutions that are not part of the original equation. Now when you square this, you get rid of the radical, that becomes x squared plus 8x. And on the right hand side, you get again something like a minus b squared, a squared plus b squared minus 2ab, which is 8x. It's important to understand and memorize the formulas because those are uh, patterns. You need to know how they work uh, quickly. You can't always look it up. Just like the multiplication facts, Obviously, some people are against memorizing it, but I think it's helpful. If you didn't know 7 times 8, every time you would have to use a calculator or just count your fingers, whatever. Anyways, that's another story. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of the x squared and then put the 8x together with the 8x. That gives us 16x equals 16 and x equals 1. Now, what's that supposed to mean? We only got one solution and I was just talking about extraneous solutions, like some solutions may not work. But we ended up with a single solution. So what am I going to do? Check it out. So we always have to check our work. So go back to the original equation, which is this, and then plug in 1. You probably did this at the very beginning, like, oh, I know the answer. I know the solution, right? That's, that's what you were thinking. So if you replace x with 1, supposedly that's a solution. You get this. And square root of 9 is just 3. And square root of 1 is just 1. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. So it checks. Which means x equals 1 is a valid solution. Since it's the only solution, we got one solution. <laughs> Make sense? Great. So that's the first method, or sort of 1a. Okay. What about 1b? If you call this a, I guess. What about 1b? 1b starts off with the original problem. But instead of squaring both sides, you isolate, you put the radicals on different sides. 
There is a good reason. I mean, it's not super duper important, but let's subtract square root of x and then square both sides. Make sense? So let's go ahead and square this and square that. And now here we get x plus 8. Remember the radical square root and the square are inverse operations. They're going to cancel out. Equals, if you square the difference again, a squared plus b squared. Square root of x squared is just x. Minus 2ab is going to be 8 times the square root of x. Awesome. Now, x cancels out. That's good. Get rid of the x. And we end up with something like this. Now, you can either way, um, you can just subtract 16 or subtract 8 and add 8 square root of x. I want to put the 8 square root of x on the left-hand side, so I'm just going to add it. And subtract the 8. That's going to give me 8. And what's that supposed to mean? It means square root of x equals 1. And this equation has one solution, doesn't it? Think about it. You square both sides and you get x equals 1 as before. And remember, we checked it. We already know it works. So it's all good. Make sense? Okay. That is the kind of like the second method or second branch of the first method or 1B. Okay. We don't have 2A, 2B. It would be nice because then I could kind of joke about 2B or not 2B. But anyways, you get the idea. So second method. Obviously, second method is supposed to be different from the first one, right? Of course, it's very different. Hopefully, you'll appreciate this better. Now, one thing about uh, the second method, though, I want to just caution you, because what happens is it doesn't always work. It only works in certain scenarios, but this is one of them, and I just want to show you. So... When does it work? When it doesn't work, you can figure it out um, looking at the solution method. Anyways, so I'm going to write the conjugate of this expression. Why? Because I'm going to multiply them. So the conjugate, the radical conjugate for this expression is going to be square root of x plus 8 with a minus sign. Okay? And I don't know what it is. I mean, this is 4. Good. But I don't know what the second one is, right? So let's call that... What should I call it? No idea. Let's call it capital A. I don't know why, but I feel like using a capital letter. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two expressions. What happens if you multiply two conjugates? If you said difference of two squares, you write a plus b multiplied by a minus b becomes a squared minus b squared. Okay? And that's equal to x plus 8 minus x. That's great because you get rid of the radicals. And then x cancels out and you end up with 8. 4a is 8, which means a is equal to 4. I mean 2. What am I talking about? I don't know. My arithmetic is very weak. Like, I don't know that 4 times 2 is 8. Anyways, I figured it out. a is equal to 2. But what is a? Let's go back and let's rewrite our system. Obviously, we do know the value of the second expression now. And what I can do is I can just use this as a system. And use elimination. This was A, remember? Now it's 2. Great. So you can definitely use elimination. And if you want to find X directly, I would just subtract these equations. So let's go ahead and negate the second one. Like this. Multiply everything by negative 1. And add, which is equivalent to subtracting. These two are going to cancel out. 2 times the square root of X is equal to 2. Square root of X equals 1. And that gives you X equals 1. And here's the graph of the situation. As you can see... This is the radical, that's the horizontal line, and they intersect at 1, 4, which means there's only one solution to this radical equation. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.